to start with a quote from the foreword by Lord Smith uh, to his report. Quote, Scotland voted no, but it did so with each of the three main UK parties promising more powers for the Scottish Parliament. I was asked to lead a commission working with the five parties represented in the Scottish Parliament to agree what those new powers should be, and this is the important part for me. In doing so, I sought to give a voice to the public and the various organisations that make up the fabric of Scottish life. And for me, from the start, it has failed. The five political parties had to sign the contract, so first of all, those signatures were on behalf of their political priorities. And in the case of the three unionist parties, probably what the Scottish branches were told they could sign up to by London HQ. How do I know this? Because, I quote again, at Tuesday's Cabinet, when Alistair Carmichael read out the plans taking shape at the Smith Commission table, one after another English Tory Cabinet ministers challenged the plans and their implications for their brief and their department. Theresa May was amongst them, George Osborne too. Duncan Smith was said to have been the sharpest critic of what was being, keywords, cooked up in Scotland fearing that his entire universal credit fabric was being unravelled. There weren't discussions with the Scottish people. There were discussions down telephone lines to London. I've only got five minutes. This de minimis offer cannot begin to meet the compromise of Devo Max, which, of course, was prohibited from being on the ballot paper from day one by the unionist parties and only surfaced as an expeditious attempt to prevent independence. And even Murdo Fraser called it in this chamber the so-called vow. I notice he didn't do that today. Nick Clegg, however, prefers to call it vow max or vow plus plus. How far have the liberals and federalism fallen now, it's not even coherent, a key word used by Mark MacDonald and also used by Smith in his submission. He asked for something to be substantial and coherent. Now, we can argue about whether it's substantial. This side and that side think it's substantial, we do not. But coherent, it definitely is not coherent. One cannot touch one part of the benefit system without the whole of the benefit system being available to you. You cannot touch one tiny part of income tax without having the whole of the tax system available. This is destabilising. And I can tell you something. Had the unionist parties been astute, which we know they're not, they might have shot the independence fox for good, or at least wounded it very seriously, had full tax and welfare powers been devolved to this Parliament. But you've done completely way. the opposite. The Scottish people and 1.6 million voted for the full whack. 1.6 million is not a tiny minority. It's a substantial number of people. And a substantial number at the last minute voted for devolution thinking they were going to get something big, not a pig in a poke. So you have not satisfied them. How do I know you have not satisfied them? Listen to me. Okay, we have please. over 90,000 members in the Scottish National Party. I'll bet your membership's not going up. Why is it going up? Because people are disappointed at the way they've been treated by the Smith Commission. And by the way, my signature's okay. not on that paper. And it would never have been on that paper. What we learn is we know that this contract, this contract was done to the lowest common denominator so all signatures could be there. You thought the Smith Commission would Member bury Center, independence dead. You thought it put the tin lid in it. It's done exactly the opposite. I thank you very much for that. Thank you, Jenny Mara. Order, please. Jenny Mara to be followed by Stuart McMillan.